For the last eight months, my classmate Brandon Walker and I have been working on converting our history teacher's folding pedal bike to an e-bike. This project has entailed countless hours of research, design, trial and error, and revision, but in this video I will condense much of this information down into a format that both summarizes the process through which we did the conversion and provides tips as well as minor instructional material which will hopefully help the viewer complete a similar project if they are so inclined. The bike we were tasked with converting was a turn node D7i. The bike is primarily targeted at commuters and folds both at the handlebars and about halfway down the frame for easy storage. The Turn D7i has a 7-speed internal hub-style gearbox, 24-inch wheels, a cargo rack mounted over the rear wheel, and a dynamo which powers the bike's light integrated in the hub of the front wheel. Our primary goals when designing this conversion were a 25 mile per hour cruise speed and a 3-second acceleration to cruise speed. Additionally, we did not want to make any permanent modifications to the bike and every part of the electric conversion had to be removable. Right off the bat, easy to install and widely available hub motors were out of the question. Not only do most quality hub motors exceed our $300 budget, but cheap hub motors available from overseas often had only a fraction of the output power that we needed and could only achieve maximum speeds of around 12 miles per hour. This meant that we had to design and produce our own drivetrain from scratch, which proved to be a challenging but feasible solution. Because we could not use a hub motor, we decided to find a suitable brushless motor which we could mount to the side of the cargo rack and drive the rear wheel with using a pulley and belt. The brushless motor we chose was a Flipsky 140 kilovolt 3.5 kilowatt motor. This motor was designed for use with belt drive systems like ours and provided a good balance of speed, torque, and efficiency. To drive the motor, we are using a 50 amp FS ESC, also from Flipsky. This is just a clone of the open source VESC a highly customizable and programmable driver for brushless motors. It can handle a maximum continuous current of 50 amps and a peak current of 240 amps, although our battery can't provide that much current at once. The motor was mounted using a 3D printed mount that took several iterations to perfect and line up with the drive pulley. The end result offset the motor from the mounting point center line by 20 millimeters towards the wheel and had a slot which an M5 bolt fit into to allow the installation and use of a belt tensioner. By applying simple kinematic equations and conservation of energy, the necessary number of teeth on the drive gear was calculated to be 216. We couldn't buy an HTD5 pulley with that many teeth, so we had to make one ourselves. I designed the pulley to consist of both 3D printed plastic and CNC cut aluminum parts to allow easy and low cost construction but also high strength. The teeth were 3D printed in a ring split into three pieces and were mounted on an aluminum assembly that we cut on a CNC router consisting of a hub, spokes, and outer ring. The drive pulley was mounted using CNC cut clamps, which clamped the hub of the pulley to the wheel's hub shifter and braced it against the spokes of the wheel. Initially, I tried to splice a belt myself using pins. However, the splice was far too weak to handle the torque of the motor and broke instantly. It was replaced with a pre-made 1,175mm circumference HTD5 belt from China, which worked fine. The bike's brain is an Arduino Mini running some code I wrote that gets data from the VESC, controls the dash display, and interprets throttle signals from the Hall Effect throttle on the handlebars and sends them as a PPM signal to the VESC. The Arduino is housed in a dashboard I 3D printed and mounted to the handlebars along with an LCD display, circuit board, and key switch. The bike will not interpret throttle signals without the key being turned on, preventing it from being ridden away under electric power without the key. The wiring was cleaned up with some wire wrap, the battery was mounted using small nylon straps and 3D printed guides, and the bike was finished after some mechanical tweaks and software alterations. Here's a build montage of the bike.
The bike attained speeds of between 23.7 and 26 miles per hour as measured by GPS depending on terrain and battery charge. It had no problems going up steep hills at a reasonable pace and could comfortably cruise for long distances without overheating the motor or electronics. All the project files are in the GitHub repository linked in the description.